right, that's right. Congratulations on the win. You guys really, you know, came out and limited them defensively in the first half. They only scored 18 points. What was what was the objective going in uh, against May? Just have a defensive mindset from the jump. Coach told us this was a really great uh, offensive team, cutting without the ball, moving without the ball. So just keeping that in mind throughout the whole game. And our goal was to hold them under 50, so we didn't quite do that good on defense, but we did a pretty good job. When you're looking at these these final kind of three games before before a Big Twelve play starts, how how important is it to kind of assert your you know assert yourself defensively and kind of establish that as as you're looking ahead a little bit to con conference? I know there's still two more games to go, but looking ahead to, to conference play here in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's super important for us to just fix things defensively going into conference, not have any slippage in the second half like we did tonight. Just building each and every day like practice and games like you said. Overall, it's a good team win. How does it feel to bounce back? Uh, it was really great to bounce back. Coach uh, Preach respond, and I feel like we responded great as a team. We no noticed you guys were pressing, pressing him a good bit there, something you guys kind of were doing with Ole, Ole Miss as well. How do you guys think you did, it, you did as far as the press? Uh, I feel like we did a great job. Throughout the whole year, that's our defense. Uh, we press, pick up uh, full throughout the whole game, so we're used to it by now. In very good shape now. A couple of big slams, you and Jalen. How does that energize the team and get you guys to go through the game? Uh, I guess it's going a lot. I mean, Jalen, he had one, one of the better ones tonight. He caught a guy slipping, so it was great that we had that going in the first half. You okay? You kind of came down on your wrist on one of those. You doing okay? You, yeah. You came back and plays. So. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm doing good. So when you have, you know, obviously the Ole Miss game thing was like eight days ago. So what was this last week like? Was that a, a a game where you feel like you wanted to get back on the court immediately? Like, what was the last week like just getting ready for this? I felt like we needed this week to prepare, uh, regroup, and respond was, like, our main objective this whole, like, week. We needed it to, like, refocus and get back to our roots. You guys got fouled 11 times in the first half, 19 overall. Does that disrupt your kind of game, or is it getting to the line a priority? Uh, getting to the line is a priority for us. Like, getting the bonus early helps us stay aggressive and just keep the mindset getting the ball inside and not not settling for first shots. You, you, often, you, you guys' offense seemed to be going pretty red hot today. We get looking back at today's offensive performance, what really was working for you guys tonight? Um, it, getting the ball inside out, just attacking the closeouts and taking the open shots like we do each and every day. Darius Johnson came at the game and started lighting up from the three-point line. Can I speak on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we got him some great looks. He was just moving without the ball really well, and he was ready uh, – to shoot the ball when it came to him. What, going into these last couple of mat, um, games before a conference play against a couple of uh, in-state opponents, what are you guys looking to kind of nail down and perfect before you go into conference play against a Red Hot Big 12? Um, just dominate overall, stay uh, defensive-minded, and just do what we do offensively and defensively, just masterpiece on both ends of the floor. Overall, you had a really well-balanced game today. Shot, shot well, rebounded well, passed well. Any thoughts on that? Um, that's a credit to my teammates. Just giving me the ball where I needed it. And then as far as my assists, just finding them. And I did a pretty good job rebounding the ball tonight. So I hang my hat on that as well. Okay. Coach ended up getting a chance to empty the, the bench, getting a chance to see Charlie and Puka, Puka and Michael all out there. What's it like to be able to get a chance to see some of, you, some of your teammates that don't get a chance to play a lot, get out, get some playing time? That was great seeing all of them out there. I mean, they go hard each and every day. They push us in practice. So just seeing them get out there is a reward. And, like, we love seeing them getting the playing time. You, men you mentioned that your goal was to limit Maine to 50 and it got to, it getting to 51. What do you guys think you can do against Florida, FAMU, and Bethune to kind of improve on the defensive front? Um, just coming out in the second half and having a defensive mindset like we do in the first half, not so much trading baskets with a team just because we're up a certain amount of points remaining focused on the defensive end. I feel like offensively we'll get what we want, just staying locked in defensively is what we need to focus on more. Man, it's been eight days since you played Ole Miss, so kind of, um, you know, what's this last week been like? Obviously that one left a bitter taste in your mouth. Obviously you were locked in defensively for a game like this. What was kind of the mindset of what you needed to do to be successful, and did you do that tonight against May? Um, just making sure that we follow the game plan and coming out with that chip on our shoulder that since we lost a game that we feel like we should have won. Um, so just making sure we follow the game plan and coming back and just responding. Yeah. Jalen, main shot, 7 for 27 in the first half. 
from the field and overall didn't have a great game offensively. How much do you credit your defense and how well you guys played tonight? Um, I credit it a lot. I feel like we prepared a lot for their um, fast-paced um, offensive game. So I feel like um, just to pre prepare um, every day in practice this week, um, we had a week to prepare for them. So I feel like we did good on that, competing in practice um, and playing hard and just staying focused when we're going through the game plan and practice. You had the chance to get to go to the basket with a couple of slams. How does it feel whenever you get the opportunity to do that? Um, it feels good to get the crowd into the game and also my teammates into the game. So that most definitely turned me up and also turned my team up as well. Overall, it was a great team win. Uh, crowd got into the game. Players who don't usually get so many minutes got into the game. You guys had an overall great win. Want to speak on that? Um, I love um, when we can have the ability to execute on our defensive game plan and get those guys in the game because every day in practice they compete and they play hard. So just just credit to them, um, well, credit to us helping them to get on the court. There are obviously two more games left in, in the non-conference season before before Big 12 play begins. What do you want to see this team kind of continue to improve and kind of harden before you get it before you get into into conference play? I would just say just focusing on um, one practice at a time and one game at a time and just making sure that um, every practice we're having a level five practice and also just coming out and playing hard as we can and staying focused on the game plans with the game today. So we got a quick turnaround saying you so we need to be focused in practice tomorrow. And near the end of non-conference play for you, obviously your first year at UCF, where would you kind of say your game is right now? Are you feeling comfortable either? Obviously your team's leading score, but are you getting more comfortable game by game with you know, playing with your teammates as you kind of you know, look ahead almost, you're almost to this Big 12 conference schedule? I almost definitely feel comfortable. Um, appreciate my teammates for helping me get into my spots and things like that, but I still feel like I yet to play my best basketball, honestly. So just got to stay in the gym and keep working at it, and it's still going to pay off. You said you feel like you haven't played your best basketball. What is that next next level for you? What, what do you want to see yourself do maybe, you know, once the conference play gets here? Where, where can you get better? Uh, being able to move without the ball. Um, like when certain certain teams top lock me or when I have to, uh, to cut, I kind of just stand on the, um, the outer three-point line. So just being able to move without the ball and also getting the flow of my shots. So, but that's going to come with time. Other things that would make you and your team most effective in conference play, how would you feel you did in the, in those characteristics of, over the course of this season? And do you think maybe there's stuff you need to perfect in these last couple of games before you get into conference play? Um, we just need to perfect um, putting two halves together. Um, I feel like we had a few games where we played um, good in the first half and not so good in the second half. So I feel like we have to put two um, two halves together as a team and just stand focused on our defensive game plan. Just having attention to detail, honestly. Darius Johnson came into the game, like I said before, um, shot a couple threes in the second half. He kept shooting well from the three-point line. How does that energize the team and keep you guys going? I almost definitely gave us a boost off the bench with him coming in and we have no drop-off. He actually made us go up even higher, so that's, that's good on him making shots. Um, I, don't, I don't know where he went for three, but I know he shot it very well. What's up? What's the biggest thing that you want to make, that you yourself want to see from this team going into FAMU, FAMU um, to celebrate the holidays? Um, just being able to put two halves together and just stay hungry, um, never get satisfied with how bad we beat a team, and never playing down to the competition. On the way, it was an excellent defensive effort against Maine. Um, you know, obviously they had won some games, they had some good wins this season. They only scored 18 points in the first half. What do you like about your team de defensively in a game like this? Well, again, I thought our guys did a really good job of playing with a good intensity. I thought our energy and effort was really good. And uh, that's what we want to see. You know, I want to see our guys go out there and pace themselves and see what we're capable of with that type of pressure. And our guys are getting better. I think it's becoming more of our identity is what we're trying to accomplish. And our guys are really understanding how we can uh, do that and even do it better. You shot 7 for 27, uh, main shot 7 for 27 in the first half. How did you guys feel? when they saw that or when they went into the half knowing they had such a commanding lead? Well, it's important for us to understand in this game of basketball, no league is safe. So, you know, a lot of times we're talking about understanding that just because you have a big lead doesn't mean a team can't make a run and come back. A three-point shot is the great equalizer. I thought I got to defend the three really, really well tonight. And uh, that's what we talked about, just understanding that taking a next play mentality, it's a new half, it's a new start. Let's make sure we come out with the right mindset. And I thought I did. I got started the second half uh, the way we wanted to. I know there's still two more games before you get to Big 12 season, but how important are these games to kind of setting the table and, and being ready for, for conference play to start? Well, all these games are important for us. You know, one, you know, we have a number of guys we're trying to implement into our system. Like I said, when you have 10 new guys in your program, you know, you're trying to get the chemistry right with your guys. You're trying to get rotations down. 
And so we, those things are still, you know, work in progress for us because now you have Antoine back for the second game. And that means our rotation changes. And so if that's happening, we have to get, a, you know, we have to adjust. The players have to adjust because it means more and less minutes for different guys. So there are lots going on, you know, when you see new personnel arriving that can help your team. And Antoine's a young man that can help our team. There is Johnson didn't start today. Any reason for the change of the lineup? No, he was he he had gotten injured, so he didn't practice yesterday. So it kind of, for the most part, if you don't practice the day before a game for us, you know you, you don't start. There's nothing changes for him going forward. Of course, he's you know he is who he is. He's a really good player. He's our point guard. He's our leader. Uh, but he missed the practice. He was hurt, and so we really weren't even sure he was going to go until pretty much almost game time. So it's one of those things where we can't strategize and do what we want to do if someone doesn't practice and defend and all the things we got to do in prepping for that game. And so uh, so he had to take a different role today. I thought he handled it very well, came in and gave us great energy and made shots. Well, yeah, yeah, you had quite the night going five for six, four for four on the three-point three, three point line. Consider, considering that he came he came into the, he came into this game and injured, how would you kind of look at his performance? I thought he was terrific. You know, not only the, the four for four from three, I just thought the ball moved well. I thought, you know, he didn't force anything really. He found his teammates. I thought he was very unselfish. Like he had a chance for a layup one time. He gave it to Jalen for a dunk. I mean, that's a sign of a, a very mature point guard. He's comfortable in who he is and how he's playing. And he's looking to make his teammates better. You know, we all know he can score. But now you're seeing his ability to not just do that, but to be a facilitator and help other guys accomplish things out there on the floor as well. What do you think about Shamari Allen on an all around game? Just a hair away from a double double, nine points, nine rebounds, five assists. What did you like from his night? You know, I just like to see. You know, Shamari just come into his own. You know, he's starting to, you know, understand our system better. He's getting more comfortable, you know, playing with the guys on our team. And that's a big pro a big part of it. And so I'm happy to see him getting comfortable. You know, I thought last game, second half, I thought it was a big jump for him as far as who he's capable of being. And I thought he followed that up with a really good game today. Uh, nine points, like you said, nine rebounds, five assists, no turnovers. I mean, so I thought he had a really solid night. I believe I'm right with that, right, Emma? Yeah. Yeah, zero turnovers, exactly. Right. So, you know, if you have a night like that, you know, he did a great job for us. And uh, and I think, like I said, I think he's only going to continue to get better as he gets more comfortable. You guys took a commanding half, a commanding lead in the first half and never looked back. Overall, it was a great team win. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm really proud of our guys. I thought, you know, it was a good week for us. You know, it's a week where you have finals and, and guys are concentrating on, you know, doing well in the new semester. I thought our guys did a good job of that as well as, you know, understanding that we have to still practice when we can and still look to get better. And so we came in every day with that mindset. Uh, you know, we've been sitting on a loss for the last seven or eight days straight. And I thought our guys responded the way you want to see them respond. They came out focused and they came out aggressive, attacking, and uh, made some really good basketball plays. Jamari said that you, you, that the goal was to limit them to under 50, you got end up getting 51. Just looking at the defensively, what did you kind of see from them, especially in the second half there? Well, the second half, I thought, you know, you know, it ended up being a tie score, you know, 33-33. I thought you'd give, their, you'd give their players and team a lot of credit. You know, you know, you know, we always want to play as hard as we can defensively and make it as difficult as we possibly can. But they're a good basketball team. I don't think the scores indicate really how good they are. I mean, you know, people looking at the names on jerseys. I don't look at names on jerseys. You're watching that around the country right now. You're seeing a lot of teams getting beat. So, you know, we don't believe in that. They're a good team. They have really good guard play. They play with great pace. And I don't think they've had a game like this this year. I think this is probably the lowest scoring game they've had this season. And I give our guys a lot of credit for that because, you know, I, I, get, I give them and their coach just a lot of respect for how they play. I think they're good. They're going to have a really good season this year. And uh, I think their record has proved it. They've won four in a row and beat some good teams. Your two leading defensive anchors, Ibrahim Diallo and Omar Payne, had a combined seven blocks a night. And you guys are one of the top leading schools in blocks in the country. What are your thoughts on that? Well, those guys, you know, and, and recruiting those guys and, you know, getting those guys to be a part of our program, you know, we saw their ability to do that. We felt going forward we needed guys on the front line that are capable of blocking or changing shots as well as rebounding in traffic. And we thought those, both of those guys are capable of doing that. It's good to see them kind of playing well together. And then throwing Silla in that position, some too for us. You know, don't forget Silla, who's also a seven-footer. Even though he doesn't play that position as much, he's capable of playing there as well. And so uh, that gives us depth at that position and gives us two guys that are very experienced in, in Omar and, and uh, Ibrahima. Chad Omar. Hendricks, he went and dressed out. Is he hurt? Or yeah, he's hurt. He already, you know, he, he's, he's getting better, but he's hurt right now. But uh, he should be back, I think, in the near future.
Shamar, Shamari said that the team needed to be able to, to string two two halves together, put two halves together. How can, do you think the team did that to, to not to that night? And if they didn't, how can they do that in the future? Uh, no, I don't think we did it tonight. To be quite you know frank, I think that uh, we could have been better. But I like I said, but I'm always as you know in here, I'm always gonna get the other team credit for why we didn't do better because they make adjustments too. They're well coached. They have talent. And so uh, I think they had something to do with that. And then for us, uh, I think, you know, we have to do a better job of, of not having any letdowns. You know, to everybody to come in knowing exactly what their assignments are and do their jobs to the best of their ability. I thought we, we blew some assignments in the second half. We weren't where we were supposed to be. And they're going to capitalize on any mistakes you make like that. And so, yeah, we can be better. And I think sometimes you get a big lead, it, it can be a false sense of security. You can start trading baskets because you have a lead. You know, we can't get into a trade basket mentality. I think really good teams and championship caliber level teams, they don't play that way. They don't get into trading baskets with teams. They, they about getting stops every time they come down the court. And we have to continue to grow in that area. Are we getting better? Absolutely. I think we are in all those facets. It is a process for these guys learning what our standards are at UCF. Uh, Mintos on his social media posted he was maybe flying home. What's, what's his status? Uh, he had a death in his family. His grandmother passed away. Oh, okay. You know, right before the holiday is tough. So okay. we, we talked about it and said, hey, you need to, you know, it's not like he lives, you know, a couple of stayed over. So, you know, he, he's in Lithuania. So, he, you know, it's a long way from home. He's been home, away from home for a while. So we felt it was better for him if he could go a little earlier, go now. And, uh, you know, spend time with his parents. It's tough. Yeah, you lose your grandparent, your grandmother. So uh, that's what's going on. A lot of distractions going on for the rest of the month to get ready before you get into conference play. What are you going to do to implement differently to try and refocus them between finals, the holidays? You have two games that aren't significantly strong. How are you going to try and work to get them focused on that? Well, what we want to do is, you know, we finished finals, which is good. So that's over now for us. So that's no longer something that's, that's, that's in our guys' way. Uh, they're done. You know, with another game coming, it's a quick turnaround. So this game's going to be quick, and then we have the holidays for our guys. We'll send our guys home, and then they'll go home until around the 26th. They'll come back, and then we'll start preparing for our next opponent. And so I, at this time of the year, I want our guys to, to get home, spend time with their families, celebrate. You know, this is, you know, like what are our priorities? You know, it's, it's family time, and they should enjoy that. And then we come back, we're going to refocus. We're going to refocus and start preparing for our next opponent, followed by getting ready for league play. But the main thing is, these next few days, just keep getting healthy, keep getting better, understanding that we have a lot of room for improvement on this team. I think as we get more chemistry and, and, our, and the guys that are coming on the line now get more reps, I think they're going to continue to help us grow as a program and as a team. And I'm excited about you know, what we're capable of accomplishing as we move forward. How is C.J. Walker coming along? He's getting better. He's getting healthier. You know, he's getting you know, better you know, every day as well. You know, it's been a process for him, but... He's getting better, and so we're excited about you know him continuing to move forward. And you know, when you know when we get to go ahead from the trainer and the doctors, then then he'll have his opportunities to contribute as well. But he is improving, and you know, hopefully he continues on that path. I mean, I know you've been hesitant to put you know a time frame or a timetable on a return, but you have said you know the hope was to get him back you know before the end of the season. It, it's kind of you can maybe see the light at the end of the tunnel that you know maybe there's a window in a month less than I mean. Can you, is it getting uh, closer? I mean, yeah, it's getting closer every day. Yeah, it's getting closer every day. <laughs> every day is getting closer, and uh, you know, it's just it's just a matter of time for him. But uh, you know, we'll see because the reason I can't give you an exact time or wonder because he could have he can go in tomorrow and have any kind of setback, and now yeah. that's two more weeks, so that's another month. You know, it, yeah. I can't really. It's, it's impossible to say until it until until it's done. You know, what I mean, it's one of those things I have to set the wait, so I don't want to mislead you. And say something, then I get, oh man, he he can't go, you know, yeah. he couldn't go because he tweaked it, or you know, he had a setback from, you know, a swelling, or what, you know, whatever, yeah. all the things that go along with that type of injury. So we just have to kind of, you know, be patient. You know, we have great doctors and trainers. They're going to make sure when the time is right, they'll give me the nod, and that's when, you know, we'll all know. You had the chance to kind of empty the bench at the end, and get a chance to see Comey, Charlie, Michael, Ubal. But what's it? How does it feel to be able to get them some on court action? How would you kind of assess their perform their performance in a sense of showing how the, the depth this team has? Well, we evaluate all of our players. You know, walk ons are no exception. You know, we have standards for all of our players. Our standards, like we have a saying, our standards are our standards. We don't care who's on the floor. 
because everyone practices, everyone works hard, so we expect you to do certain things on the floor the right way every time. Talent may be different, but that doesn't mean you can't do the things that we want you to do out there on the floor, or we wouldn't have you out there. And so, you know, I think we can be better. I thought at the end, we gave up too many offensive rebounds. I thought we fouled too much at the end, you know, down the stretch of the game. And we'll cover that tomorrow, just like I'm covering the guys who started the game. I'm going to cover the guys who came in at the end, because I think as, you know, we'll, you know, you're only strong with your weakest links. And so the better everybody is on our team, the better we are as, as a group. So if every individual improves, our team improves. You wanted to hold them to under 50, right? That was well, I don't, I don't like to use words yeah. like that, you know, because, I mean, that's, those are challenging things to do. We just want to have, you know, we always want to have a defensive masterpiece, which means when I grade the game tonight, when we grade it as a staff, did they do execute the things we wanted to the majority of the times? If they did, it would be a masterpiece. If they didn't, it won't. And uh, I really won't know until I can really get down into the weeds and start watching tape this evening with our staff and I'll uh, start grading it and making that determination so I'll deliver that message to them tomorrow. A glaring issue throughout non-conference play has been the free, the free throw shooting. Yes. How do you prep to get better for that as conference play comes? Well, we need guys making sure they step up when they get to the line. You know, we're practicing them, taking more free throws. Guys need to look at themselves individually, get in there and get more reps at the line. And stuff we talk about, we, you know, we work on them when we're in practice with them. Guys need to do extra, get in there and just really concentrate and focus. These guys are good shooters, so they should be good free throw shooters. So it's a matter of just, just focusing and con it's just focus and concentration for our guys. And uh, they'll get it, though. I think as they're learning to play the way we're playing at the pace and the way we're playing 94 feet, majority of the game, sometimes I get there, I think they get there, they're still a little bit wound up from all the action. I'm sure you're watching this, you watch it like a tennis match. It's like this. Mm -hmm. And so when you're playing that way, these guys probably come from programs where they never played with that type of pace. And so as they, I think as they get more comfortable with the pace, I think their free throw shooting will continue to go up and, and get to the level I think they're capable of. So extra reps as well as the pace. All set, guys? Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.